Here we see Shredicus Maximus, otherwise known as the King of Guitar Center. He is attempting to assert his musical dominance with a display of sweet picking. The subject seems to be unaware of the complete lack of musicality or finesse in what he is doing. One of our research technicians will lower the gain setting on his amplifier, like so. Shredicus Maximus seems to realize that underneath all that distortion, his sweet picking is actually a pile of shit. You poor fool. I'm Ben Eller, and this is why you suck at playing guitar. lesson series for you guys. I've gotten millions upon millions of messages and comments and tweets and uh, telepathic messages and stuff from you guys requesting a video about why your sweet picking is so terrible. I've gotten a lot of messages from people saying stuff like, uh, my sweet picking made my family disown me, my sweet picking is so shameful that I fell off the wagon and became a useless drunk. Uh, I'm getting death threats from Al-Qaeda due to my sweet picking and all this stuff. So I guess it's pretty important I give you guys a lesson on this stuff. Uh, we all know the basic premise of sweet picking, you know? If you've got a lick that's going from the A string, like let's say to the D, to the G, to the B, to the E, you know, just going straight down through the strings, it makes a lot more sense just to use one fluid stroke through the strings than to make a bunch of individual movements or alternate pick through it or something like that. It's the most efficient way to get there, you know? Distance from point A to point B, shortest distance is a straight line, and that's what you seek to do with your pick. But I think a lot of lessons on sweet picking really skim over the technique, and they just say, you know, oh, just rake your pick through the strings. They don't really talk about the role of the left hand, uh, or how to hold the pick, and stuff like this. And you end up with a lot of these guitar center heroes who do these wretched arpeggios where you can hear like the low note, and then the highest note. This is one of my least favorite things in the world, and I hear it so often. There's no rhythmic guide to it. All these middle notes are just a blur. That kind of stuff really, really takes me off to hear. So I want to rid the world of that and show you guys what to do and how you can correct that. Uh, what I want to do first with you guys is give you a couple of tips about how to hold the pick. We're going to talk pretty in-depth this time about what to do with both hands, but that's where we're going to start is how to hold the pick, because I think that gets skimmed over a lot. Let's dig into that. All right, here's three quick tips I can give you about how to hold your pick to keep you from getting like assassinated for your terrible sweep picking. First things first, if you're holding the pick straight with the string like this, you're going to run into problems. If the pick is totally parallel with the strings, it's going to kind of beat the string up a lot. See how much these strings are moving before the pick goes through? That'll make your sweeps sound terrible and feel really bad too. I'm a big devotee of Paul Gilbert. That guy is pretty much the best picking in the world. And what he does is kind of angles the pick a little bit. See how my pick is slightly diagonal now? Notice I didn't really move my whole hand or my whole arm or anything like that to make that happen. I just kind of moved the thumb a little bit and that angles my pick. Whenever you do this, the pick is going to kind of slice through the string. See how the strings aren't getting beat up anymore? You can still get a lot of power out of it without beating the strings up like this. That sucks. So be sure to kind of angle the pick a little bit whenever you play, all right? Here's another tip I'm going to give you. Follow the advice of 38 Special and hold on loosely. If you grip too tightly, you will lose control. You don't want that. You don't want to lose control of your rock and roll. So be sure to hold the pick a little looser than you think you should. Again, if the pick is being held really stiff like this where it can't wiggle at all, that's just encouraging it to beat the string up. Even if you have a good angle going on and stuff, but you're holding the pick really tightly, it'll still beat up the strings pretty bad. That leads to that really stiff feeling sound. So just loosen up a little bit. You know, here's my rule of thumb. If you can see your thumbnail turning white at the end like that, see how that's turning white at the end? If you can see that with your own picking, you're holding it too hard. Hold on a little loosely so it's got a little, you know, a little give to it like that. It's going to help everything out. Last thing I want to tell you is use the very tip of the pick. If you can use like the last atom of the pick, that is optimal. 
Because again, what we're looking for here is the path of least resistance. We don't want to have the, uh, the pick offering the string any resistance at all. If you hold the pick flat with the string, that's resistance. If you grip it tightly, that adds resistance. Uh, and also, if you use a lot of the pick, you can kind of see how my pick is uh, halfway deep into the string right now. That also offers resistance. You want the smoothest feel possible. So by using the very tip of the pick, the very end of it, that's going to help you out a lot. Hold it kind of close to the tip, you know, so you got just a little nib hanging out. I like to use smaller pointier picks. They kind of encourage me to use the very end of the pick. So keep that in mind too, all right? There's just some things you can do with your pick that are going to help you out immediately. Loose, use the tip, uh, angle the pick. Super, super, super important, all right? Before we go on, let me go ahead and show you the arpeggio I'm going to be using in a lot of these examples that follow. We'll be using more or less strings, but it'll all be basically based on this. This is just your garden variety A minor arpeggio. 12th fret A, 10th fret D, 9th fret G, 10th fret B, 8th fret E, 12th fret E, so again, that's 12 on the A, 10 on the D, 9 on the G, 10 on the B, 8 on the E, 12 on the E. That's what we're going to be using a bunch. Go over that a few times, make sure you got it before you continue on with the video. Thanks. Alright kids, now that you know the basics of how to hold your pick, and you know the sample arpeggio we're going to be using, let's talk about the actual sweeping technique itself. There's two basic options you have here, wrist versus elbow. Let's check this out. Here's exhibit A, the wrist. Notice my elbow and my shoulder never really moved when I did that. It's all the wrist controlling the hand, you know? The wrist is what's controlling the pick. A lot of players do this. Ingve Malmsteen uses the wrist. Your mom uses the wrist very effectively. And that seems to work for them. So if you find that that's more effective for you, go for it. Just use the wrist to control all your motion. Uh, I like to use my elbow whenever I sweep pick. You'll notice a lot of other players do that too. Matthias Eklund from the band Freak Kitchen. Amazing guitar player from Sweden. Check him out. Uh, we tend to use the entire arm whenever we sweep. The wrist doesn't really do much. The wrist stays pretty well just kind of relaxed and straight. And the elbow guides the pick through. Look at this. <laughs> Compared to this. That's wrist. Here's elbow. Oh, let's do that again. There you go. Uh, I tend to use my elbow more because I equate sweep picking with kind of like a really slow strum. You know, that's a slow strum on a chord. That's also basically the same motion I'm going to use whenever I sweep pick through an arpeggio really fast. Same idea. Uh, whichever way you go with, the wrist or the elbow, what you're going to want to avoid is this ridiculous nonsense. This tilting your pick downwards, tilting your wrist out whenever you do down, and then going upwards whenever you go up through an arpeggio. Oh my god, that stuff sucks, man. Absolutely horrible. There's no reason to do that. You don't do that when you strum. So why do you do it when you sweep pick? Just knock that off. If you're holding the pick right, you should be able to uh, leave the way you came. You know, you went down this way, you can go back up that way too. You don't need to do this ridiculous stuff. Watch Jason Becker, watch Jeff Loomis, watch Ingve Malmsteen, Mohamed Susamez, any of those guys you will not see any of this ridiculous twisting nonsense. So just don't do that. It doesn't serve any purpose. Keep your pick straight, you know, keep your wrist straight and stuff. You'll be fine, all right? Now, I want to show you the real secret to success here. Uh, a lot of lesson videos, I see never mentioned this. It's a concept that I call progressive palm muting. That sounds fancy, sounds expensive. Let's get in and talk about this. This is the real secret to success here. Okay, let's talk about the real ultra mega secret to the picking hand here that is going to get your family to finally reclaim you. It's a concept I call progressive palm muting. Basic idea 
is that you're taking that palm muting technique that you've used in all those Metallica songs and gradually moving it lower and lower through the strings to cover up all the strings that aren't being played at that moment. Here's the quickest way I can sum this up. Any note you're playing, like let's say you're playing the D string, okay? It doesn't matter what fret it's on, whatever. I'm on fret 10 right now. Let's say you're playing the D string. The strings above it, in other words, the E and the A, should be palm muted back here. I wish I had like an x-ray camera so I could show you here where my palm is touching the strings. I'm touching the E string, I'm touching the A string, but I'm not touching the D string because I want you to hear that one. The idea here is I'm always muting above whatever note I'm fretting, okay? Let's take this A minor arpeggio and outline what this hand is doing, one string at a time. The first note that I play is on the A string. The low E is being muted by the back of my hand. The next note in the arpeggio is on the D. Now, the E string and the A string are being muted by the inside of my hand. Here's the top three notes. A string, D string, G string. Now that I'm here, these three strings all being muted by the, the picking hand. You get where this is going. I move on to the B. Now I'm muting the G. I move on to the high E. Now I'm muting everything except for that string. That is vital, absolutely vital. Even if you have great picking technique and you have great fretting technique, and we're gonna get into fretting technique here in a second, if you don't have this progressive palm mute going on, here's what it'll sound like. Here's me doing the good muting I'm talking about. Every note's loud and clear, you're not hearing a bunch of fluff you're not supposed to hear. Here's me not muting, me just floating above the strings. All that garbage is probably why uh, nobody wants to talk to you in public. That's probably why your sweet picking is so terrible. Like I said, you can have beautiful picking technique and great fretting technique, and if you aren't muting above the fretted note, above the fretted string, in other words, this stuff's going to fall apart. Vital. Let me try to give you another angle here. Watch as the, uh, that back side of my palm just moves gradually lower and lower through the strings. I'll do it really slow so you can see better. Uh, I'm going to kind of, well, there's no real good way to get an angle on that. Whatever. See how the hand moved down? And on my way up, it's going to uncover the strings. That's the idea. Vital. You must master that progressive palm muting technique. Always muting above the string that you are fretting. I can't say that too many times. Get that down. Let's talk about what your fretting hand is doing over here. Dingus. Okay, so you've got your picking hand worked out. You know how to hold a pick. You're either using your elbow or you're using your wrist very much like your mother does. You're doing that progressive palm muting thing. You're good. So let's talk about the fretting hand and its job. That's half of the uh, half of the equation here anyway. Okay, whenever you're sweep picking and playing notes here with the left hand, you don't want the notes to overlap like Tom Cruise's teeth in the 80s. That sounds ugly, like Tom Cruise's front teeth in the 80s. Don't do that. Nor do you want the notes to have big gaps between them, like Madonna's teeth. That doesn't sound any good either. You want every note to be like just butted up to the next one. You know, they should be so close together you can barely slip a piece of paper in between them, but not so close that they overlap. They've got to just be like this. And how you're going to achieve that and make it sound really, really good is by using this full and empty concept we're about to learn. This is something I picked up a couple of years ago from a Guitar Method book, and it's stuck with me ever since. Let's talk about this. So the final frontier here of left hand technique is going to be this full and empty mentality I'm about to teach you here. Here's the deal, even if your picking is fantastic and your fretting is really good and stuff, if your fingers are like jumping off of every note after they're done, it's 
going to sound out of control. Look, if you're playing an electric guitar and you're using overdrive on your amp and stuff, it's really easy to accidentally do pull-offs. And if your finger is running away from the string after it's done, it's just basically doing pull-offs on all your strings. Doesn't matter how good the muting is, it's going to sound sloppy. I think that's the reason why you see a lot of guys on, uh, you know, on YouTube and stuff putting like hair bands on their strings and stuff. It's to keep those accidental pull-offs from sounding out. If you're good, if you're on top of your game, you don't need to hide behind a hair band. Okay, uh, you never see Ingve do that, so we don't need to either. You just got to get in control of this hand. Here's how you're gonna do it: full and empty. Whenever you're fretting a note, like let's say the D string here, fret number ten, you're pushing down on it, right? Your finger is full of energy. You're contracting the muscles to make that happen. You know, I'm putting force down on the string. Now, whenever I don't want to hear that note anymore, like when I'm going to the next note in the arpeggio, I don't need to use more energy and make this finger run off from the string and get away from it like that. You know how that caused a pull-off to sound out? Terrible. Awful. That's why you haven't gotten a birthday card from your stepdad in like years. Okay. How to combat that is using this emptying technique. Here's the deal. I'm full. I'm going to empty the energy out of that finger. Do you see that? I just relaxed. I'm full of energy. Now I'm going to empty it. That's it. You loosen each finger after it's done. After the note is done, you loosen. That's so vital, man. This serves two purposes. For one, it conserves a lot of energy because the more you're flailing about with your fingers here, the more energy you're using up. And also, most importantly, whenever you loosen up off a string like that, it effectively mutes it. You know, you're muting that string out just by laying that soft finger pressure on it. That combined with your progressive muting gives you the cleanest sound possible. Now in order to really get a grip on that, you just gotta go real slow, man. You gotta go super slow with this stuff. And what you wanna make sure of is that you don't feel tension in more than one finger at a time. Basically, this finger is gonna empty out as soon as this finger fills up. This finger empties out as soon as this finger fills up and so on. You're never yanking your fingers off. They're just relaxing because their job is done. You gotta go super slow, which kind of sucks because sweeps really only sound cool if they're really fast. You know, you never hear any solos that have that in them. So you got speed in mind, but it's gonna be a while before you get there. Practice this slowly. Do this filling and emptying technique really slowly and carefully, like what we're talking about here. And your stuff is going to sound incredible by the time you get it sounding fast, alright? If you want to know the best way to practice this stuff, it all starts with your tone that you're using. If you're playing through like a Line 6 Spider on the insane setting with the gain totally maxed out and like tons of delay and reverb on there, you're not doing yourself any favors. Yes, it makes you sound better or whatever, but that's not what you want. You want an honest representation of what you are playing. So it's kind of rough, but you want to dial in a tone that does you no favors. You know, you want no audio Photoshop here, in other words. Uh, if you're playing on like a modeling amp, I'm using the wonderful Kemper Profiler, which is a modeling amp. Dial up something like an old Marshall sound, or if you want to be really unforgiving, like an old Fender kind of sound. Uh, I like to use a little distortion. You know, because distortion amplifies everything. It amplifies every last little noise that you make and stuff like that. Some people say to practice this on a totally clean setting, which I don't really agree with because it doesn't have that amount of compression that distortion gives you. So if you're kind of being sloppy over here with this hand, you won't quite notice it as much if you're playing on a clean tone. So use a little distortion. But when I say a little, I mean a little. Use like an ACDC crunch kind of tone. No delay, no reverb. It should be kind of a stiff, unforgiving kind of sound. 
-hmm. Again, you want as honest of a representation of your playing as possible. And you're not doing yourself any favors in the long run by covering up bad playing with tons of effects and distortion and compression. So, dial in something that you don't really like playing on. It'll uh, benefit you in the long run. And lastly, practice on your bridge pickup. It's the loudest, most obnoxious, revealing pickup that you've got. So, use that one. If you can sound good on that pickup using a really low gain, unforgiving tone, you're going to sound sick on anything. Isn't that a pretty guitar? And there you have it. Pretty much everything that you need to know to turn your sweet picking around. Start sounding like a real hoss of a guitar player. Take it slow. Practice the stuff really, really slowly. I think that's the, uh, the biggest fatal flaw that a lot of guitar players do is they just try doing this stuff too fast, too much, all at once. I'm thinking about doing a follow-up video to this, uh, talking about some great ways to practice sweet picking, uh, some exercises and stuff like that. So if you guys are interested, I'll do that for you too. Send me a smoke signal, a telepathic message, a tweet, or a YouTube comment, and I'll respond to you, answer your questions or whatever else you got, as well as provide you with uh, more video lessons for whatever it is that you suck at. So let me know what you're having trouble with, and I'm going to help you out. Thank you guys so much. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, at Ben Eller Guitars. That's Ben, E-L-L-E-R, guitars, plural, like all the beautiful guitars I'm surrounded with right now. Anyway, follow me. Thanks for watching very much. I will see you guys on the flip side. Happy shredding.